everyone to New American Youth Ballet Presents. I am so honored today to have Tamisha Guy with us. And I'm grateful for um, Kelly Ryan for reaching out from ABT. She saw an interview we did with Skylar Brandt recently. And at the end of every episode, I mentioned that I'm looking for inspiring stories. And she introduced us and I'm so glad she did. We're really excited to have you. And thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. And looking over all your achievements, it's hard to know where to start. <laughs> but, um, but let me just let me just first off uh, ask you why you began dancing in the first place. Yes. Yeah, so I am originally from Trinidad, and I moved to Brooklyn, New York, with my family when I was eight years old. And prior to that, I was heavily in sports, so I ran track and field, and I also didn't did gymnastics. Um, so moving to New York, I had no sort of um, training in dance. Um, but luckily, I went to a public school where Ballet Tech, the New York City Public School for Dance had an affiliation. And I auditioned or got auditioned, I would say, um, to just be able to go to their program two days out of the week to take a ballet class. And at the time it was an opportunity to, you know, leave school for a few hours a day. Um, but as I kept going, I started to really um, have an interest in the technique. And when I graduated fifth grade, I was sort of still trying to figure out what school I wanted to go to. And luckily Ballet Tech offered me a spot at their school. So sort of turned to my mom, she turned to me and she asked me if I wanted to continue dancing. And I said, yes. And I went to Ballet Tech and I trained there initially. So I think that's sort of what pulled me into the art form. And I would say it just opened me up to all of the possibilities that I could possibly have in the arts. And from there, I went to LaGuardia High School for dance and then I sort of took a year off after high school, um, just because at that time I wasn't sure if I wanted to pursue dance professionally um, for a number of reasons, but I think I needed to sort of divorce myself of dance for some time to really um, see if I was passionate about it and um, if I wanted to really pursue it. So I took a year off. I didn't take any dance classes. I didn't go to any dance performances, really just focused on sort of more the academic side of things. And then after that year, I auditioned for Purchase College and Fordham University. And I decided to go to Purchase and now I'm here. My initial start is Ballet Tech and I truly am grateful for the school taking a chance on me and just sort of seeing something initially. And I have to say, um, at a time where the arts are kind of left to the side during this pandemic, as I'm sure you know, you know, so many dancers, so many musicians, so many friends and artists are just kind of, um, our work is not always considered essential. Yes. The fact that ballet tech and to make ballet accessible, that's incredibly important to me that dance is accessible. It's not just somewhere out of reach that it was there and they spotted you and your talent and now that all that you you bring to the, you know, to the dance form. So that's, I always in these interviews want to emphasize how important the arts are. And yes. that continue yes. to support them. Yes. I think mental health and everything that's going to come away once this, we all go back to normal. I think the after effects are going to need art more than ever. Don't you think for healing? I wholeheartedly agree with you. Because there are days I can't wake up and verbalize how I feel, but I could dance it. Yes. I know yes. listening to some of your interviews, you are that kind of person. One thing I have to say, when I have watched you on stage and different things, you're a very authentic dancer. I don't, yeah. I feel like you're a very honest performer. And I love that about you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, I think it's something that's really important to me to sort of display in my work, you know, honesty and um, just sort of allowing people to see themselves more in the artist. I think I sort of want to move away from, you know, sort of holding the artist on a pedestal in a sense. I want audiences to sort of feel really connected to what we're doing and um, sort of see themselves even more in, in the work that, you know, I am fortunate to, to do. 
I think some people who don't know who they are try on different hats to be different ways and sometimes like an affectation or extreme and you don't feel the sincerity of it. You don't feel connected. It doesn't move you. But that's why, like even you say you took a year off to be honest about it, to really evaluate if that's that was really coming from what was important. And so when you went to SUNY, a lot of people think, oh, you can't go to college and be a professional dancer. How did the two come together for you? What was what was that like? Yeah, so going to purchase, I often say it was one of the best decisions that I've made in my life thus far, um, besides sort of taking a year off and figuring out what I wanted to do. But I feel like I learned so much about myself at that school, just in terms of the training, the people that I met, um, the sort of lifelong friendships that I still um, hold so dear. Um, but it definitely gave me an opportunity to find myself, you know, as cheesy as that sort of sounds, but um, just sort of diving into my craft even more and trying to sort of find my um, qualitative voice even. I think I was searching for that. And that's why I chose a program that sort of had um, more of a structure where there was contemporary styles and also the more codified techniques. Shift your body to the front, sending your right leg out to the side. Yes, nice. So let's say we just got to the fifth position here. We're in this hovered position, bringing your arms a little higher, shifting your shape over to the front. And just release your arms down to your legs, drop your right heel and bring your left heel to meet your right leg. Yes. Top, how are we doing? You're good? Okay. Take a deep breath in. And out. Take another deep breath in. And out. Your right arm starts. It goes over. Fingertips. Over to the side. Beautiful. Knocking the foot. To the lunge. Shifting back. Pushing off. And arms. Shift side, arms, heel, shift, stand, heel, push. How did that feel? And do you enjoy dancing, choreographing, teaching equally? Right now you're probably doing, I, I, from what I, I know, like you're doing a lot of teaching on Zoom and so on. Mm -hmm. And as a choreographer, has, um, have you taken some traditions from Trinidad? The influence is there. Is that part of your vocabulary as a choreographer? I think I would say yes. I think there's a flavor that's there. Yeah. Um, but I definitely would say teaching and performing, they're sort of, um, they hold the same weight for me. Um, Cause I would say I'm equally passionate about both. Um, I love teaching just for that exchange and finding um, just opportunities to connect with people, to share just sort of our voices and, you know, sort of play off of one another. I think that's really um, what drew me to teaching. And I love also encouraging people and sort of being a motivator um, for other artists. So it, it affords me that opportunity too. And um, just performing all together has been a, a joy. Um, and although we're not able to do it just due to COVID, I think teaching now just even through Zoom, it, it sort of offers a little bit of that. It's definitely not the same, you know, as performing on stages in front of audiences, but just having that exchange with artists, um, I am grateful for during this time. And if you could offer a couple of tips to students taking class on Zoom, as a teacher, what, what would you appreciate etiquette wise? We're still in a classroom and yeah, yeah. what, what would be some expectations that you think young dancers should keep in mind when taking a dance class on Zoom? Yes, I would definitely say be patient with yourselves. You know, it's very easy for us to sort of in this time still put a lot of pressure on ourselves to show up in the way that we used to. But I think really think about meeting yourself where you are you know you're doing the best that you can um, with sort of the circumstances that we're all being um, sort of given so definitely be patient you know I often inform my students if you need to turn off your camera for a second um, feel free to do that you know 
nicer than me. I would <laughs> mess around and shut your camera. <laughs> you know, when we're doing Adagio on the left side, don't, don't shut the camera. <laughs> You're much nicer. Yeah. Um, but patience is the, the big thing for yes. me, you know, and just being open to just new experiences because I think teachers are also trying to navigate this space as well. So we're all learning together at the same time. Yes. Um, so yeah, just patience and being open and um, meeting yourself where you are each day. And are you ever able to work with live musicians uh, virtually? How? No, no. But at Purchase, I am able to work with a live musician, which is really beautiful. And are you uh, like um like a glass? There is yes, they. Um, and I teach in a theater, so it's really large. So there's a lot of distance between um, the students and myself. But there's also a plexiglass that I can teach behind. Could you ever imagine like <laughs> last February? this scenario you know what I mean? not at all here right now but in reality you step back it wasn't that long ago that we it were was not it was not <laughs> even when people say oh, it's been a full year it's like oh, it's I know. A year? oh I know. my gosh yeah and with that in mind uh what, what what is the good side that this pandemic has done for you as an artist and what are some of the sides that have been really frustrating i mean <laughs> Pick one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think as an artist, it's sort of given me time to slow down. And I've definitely shared this a lot. You know, I feel like as artists, we're always going, we're always, you know, rehearsing, creating, touring. So I think it definitely sort of forced us to slow down and to really focus on ourselves in a sense, you know, to be a bit selfish and um, maybe selfish is not even the right word, but maybe making ourselves more of a priority um, during this time. Think about some of the needs that we maybe weren't tending to before. Um, so that I'm definitely blessed to have been, you know, given the time and space for. Um, but on the other side, I think it's just not being able to perform, you know, um, yeah, just not being able to perform, but I've been fortunate to have residency experiences with AIM where we're able to work really closely together. And that's been a treat just sort of to be able to touch my colleagues again. I don't think something like this would have maybe happened without this pandemic. I've been able to reach out to artists that I know, and I know you're incredibly busy still, but like to have the time and to be able to collaborate this way wouldn't have crossed my mind. Yes. I thought we'd have to make a meeting point, figure out that we can both be in the studio at the same time. Right. It's very challenging. Yeah. Various professional schedules. Yes. Yeah. I know I've been looking at your different work with the company AIM that you're with. And as a dancer, as an artist, what, what is like your goal to have an impact on the dance field? What is your, uh, what do you want to be known to change? Mm -hmm. If you want to change something in the dance field, what would it be? Just in the way that I navigate in the world, how I'm intentional, or I hope that I am intentional. Um, I want that to sort of have a a lasting effect on not only my colleagues, but the younger generation of artists. I want to have it foster dance, but also talk to younger artists and current artists about financial literacy, because I think it's not something that's heavily discussed in the dance field, but I really um, just think it's important for artists to have a better handle on their finances and to just not have to worry you know, yes. sort of getting rid of that struggling artist mentality, I think is something that I'm really passionate about. Um, so I'm going to continue sort of to do what I have to do to sort of get rid of that. That's wonderful, because that's a side of being an artist that usually pulls people away from their dreams or their visions of what they want, the reality of just not having you know, any kind of financial safety. Yes. And I know, yeah, I know of someone who didn't pursue dancing because of it. And I think it's heartbreaking. Yeah. You know? or yeah. like that, where they just can't, you just can't figure out how to do it. Yeah. And I have a couple of unconventional questions, but <laughs> I'm just, just going to go for it. I know you're currently working for a fabulous choreographer and you've had just some really, I'm, I'm gonna post this when we put this up, your resume and your many achievements. But I have an unconventional question in that, 
For dancers working their way up to a professional level, you'll meet all kinds of choreographers and teachers. What do you do when you come across a choreographer who really doesn't look at a dancer for what highlights them or puts unflattering choreography or it just it's not a it's not a good collaboration? How do you kind of maneuver that? What would your advice be for young dancers when you're, you know, you're in the studio and a work is being put together and it's 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 not feeling like you would dream it to feel? <laughs> wow. Wow. What a question. <laughs> no, it's great. It's great. But sometimes it's not wonderful. Yes, that's why I think it's a great question. You know, yeah, that's, it's side or, that's not what I'm known to do. Exactly. I think it's a great question. And all what I can offer is, you know, I think communication is vital in that sense. Having conversations with the choreographer to just maybe figure out what their vision is you know maybe there's a way that you can sort of help them with that vision and help them sort of realize maybe a different path that they can take to get to that vision but I think definitely communication is key and if you sort of run into you know a road where it's sort of wearing on your mental physical health then of course you know you need to take other um sort of precautions in that sense but I think first communicating sort of your feelings and being really transparent you know I think now this time has sort of afforded artists to be a bit more transparent in their work in the way that they're sort of um, communicating with the institutions that they're involved with so I think that is key you know just using your voice to sort of um, say what you want to say and, and don't be afraid <laughs> It's a funny line, isn't it? Because often we're always looked at as girls, no matter what our age is. You know, you're always treated like in a childlike way, but there is a time you have to be able to step up. And I respect what you're doing, like, like starting with finances. It's not something that dancers are taught to think about. Yes, because I think it's important. We, you know, we treat, we teach people how to treat us. And I think that is also essential in the dance field you know it's like we have to carry ourselves a certain way so people then know sort of how to navigate you know spaces with us and how we navigate spaces with them so yeah and my other unconventional well not really question is how do you get your arms so beautifully toned <laughs> <laughs> boxing <laughs> um so I would say that I'm sort of like I don't like to say I'm naturally like toned, but I feel like I build muscle very easily, but I love planks. So I do planks quite often. Right. And I started boxing maybe six years ago and I used to box maybe two, three days out of the week, um, just sort of more so for conditioning and because I loved it, but it definitely helped yeah. give me some more defined guns. <laughs> and it's probably a good release with all the frustration. Do you ever just like, <laughs> oh, you have no idea. <laughs> it's been my saving grace many of days. So great. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm gonna before I pass it off to Camila, are there any upcoming projects that you would like to to share and to let us know what what next to be looking towards, what you're working on? Or yeah. What uh, yeah. So I would say with AIM, we're currently working on uh evening length work. It's called An Untitled Love, and it's all set to D'Angelo's music. And it's a piece that's sort of centered around Black love and Black identity. So I'm really excited to continue working on that creation. And we're hoping that it premieres in this year. So fingers nice. crossed for that. Um, and personal projects, I just worked on some things um, with a good friend of mine and a filmmaker. Um, it's called Crust and it's a piece that basically um, talks about one's relationship to nature. And I am super excited about it. Um, I was able to work with a college friend, Damani Pompey as the director and Angelo Vasta as the filmmaker. So we're hoping to enter the film in some film festivals. So that's sort of getting, um, yeah, up and moving soon. Yeah, so I'm just excited about those um, two projects. And of course, working on this workshop with dance and financial literacy. So those are some things that sort of are on the um, priority list right now. 
And can you just mention your Instagram handle? So people sure, can- my Instagram is Tamisha Guy, just T-A-M-I-S-H-A-G-U-Y. Okay, so people can take a look there. I know you have various podcasts, interviews, and and your updates on your projects. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. I mean, this was just really beautiful to speak with you. So thank you again. Right back at you. I'm going to give you to Camila for a minute. Yes. Hi. Hello. Welcome back. <laughs> so I think my first question would be, um, what was a typical day like in the studio before the pandemic and then how it changed after? Yeah, sure. So with AIM, we used to rehearse maybe five days a week and we would rehearse for six hours a day. So maybe from 10 to six or we would do 10 to four, 10 to two, I think, depending on what we were preparing for. So, you know, get up early, travel to the city because we used to rehearse um, at multiple locations in the city, sometimes at City Center or Juilliard um, or even City Center, Alvin Ailey, sorry. So we just rehearsed all over. So I got to see a lot of different studios, um, which was nice. And that was sort of a typical day, just going to rehearsals, rehearsing, and then um, traveling back home. I would say now what's different is we aren't able to really work all together, right? So now due to COVID, we have to sort of work in pods, which are sort of smaller groupings. So maybe they're three to four dancers per pod. And we're also not able to have physical contact. So we have to keep our six feet distance and just really work on what we can at the moment. And those rehearsals are now no more than four hours. So we can't rehearse our six hour days that we sort of used to. Uh, The next question, why is ballet important? Like as a foundation to learn other styles? Of dances. Yeah. So I would say I started in ballet myself and I didn't know anything about dance prior to starting in ballet. And I know a lot of other people have different sort of um, starting points. So it could be modern or hip hop or any other dance style that they start in. Um, but I would say for me, starting in ballet, it definitely helped me to understand my body and how I can. Um, bring myself to the technique or what I needed to sort of work on to achieve certain dance steps. And I think with that sort of thinking, it definitely helped me in other techniques, right? So I really understood sort of how my body was moving into space and sort of the amount of effort that I needed to achieve steps. And I think um, ballet definitely taught me that and I was able to bring it into other dance styles. Um, How did you know that you wanted to dance professionally, what made you sure of yourself? Yeah, so after taking a year off after uh, high school, um, just to sort of divorce myself of dance for a bit to see if I would, if I was really passionate about it. I think after that year, I realized how much I missed it. And I couldn't solely just focus on academics. Like I had to have both. So I think within that year, just not being able to do this thing that I'd been doing for most of my life, um, it was hard. So I would say within that sort of year off time, I really realized that dance was something that I can do professionally. It was just a a day or a moment that I had where I was like, dance is going to be the thing that I'm going to pursue um, for sure. Um, Also, I wanted to know, do you play Animal Crossing? I do not. What is that? It's a game on Nintendo Switch. And it's it's um it's a game where you have to achieve That wasn't one of the approved questions. Getting a peaceful island. I just wanted to know if Oh, maybe I'll look into it now. Is it an app? Where can I find it? Can you share again? Switch. Okay. But um yeah, you can see some videos on it from Cool. Thank you for sharing. She always throws in something. Yes, you're keeping me on my toes. I love it. (laughs) Truly, truly grateful to have spoken to both of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of the week and all your projects. We can't wait to see you in person. (laughs) Yes, I look forward to it. Well, have a great week. Bye. Bye Bye now.
to the side end. Ready? Over. They present your weekly stop of inspiring and uplifting ballet stories on Manhattan Neighborhood Network, Channel 2, 4 p.m. every Sunday. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, New American Youth Ballet Presents. We can't wait to welcome our next guest, Elizabeth Bayer, a three-time gold medalist ballerina with an inspiring story to share. She is now dancing with the studio company of American Ballet Theater, and we can't wait to meet her. She was our sugar plum fairy for our world nutcracker in our last production online. Let's meet her and hear her story. To join our classes, visit newamericanyouthballet.org to hear all about our programs. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.